Nick Rocklin and of course, gotta get the recording on. All right, my name is Nick Rocklin and I'm the research data management specialist with UBC's Advanced Research Computing. Uh, together with me today, we have George Parker, who is our data integration specialist. He'll also be presenting. And then we have a number of art colleagues who are all gonna be helping in the background. Huge shout out to all of them. Um, before we get into the lesson, I would like to acknowledge that the UBC Vancouver campus is located on the traditional, ancestral, and unceded territory of the Musqueam people. And the UBC Okanagan campus is on the uh, unceded territory of the Celix Okanagan people. Now, before we jump into things, I'm going to do a bit of housekeeping stuff just because we got to cover it. Um, you have all been muted automatically when you enter the room because this is a webinar. Um, um, it's being recorded and the recording for these sessions will be made available on ARC's website, as well as our YouTube channel and the OSF, which I'll talk about in just two seconds. If you would like to ask a question, I will just get into that in um, a couple of slides. Now, all of the materials for this boot camp are available in the Open Science Framework. Now, I'm going to just show you briefly what that looks like. Um, I think there are links that have been emailed to you, as well as um, someone, someone. Maybe me, I can drop it in the chat for those who are attending virtually. But um, this is what we have set up. And so it's just the main page. And you can see here some general information about the boot camp. But going down the side here, we have um, a page for each individual course. Now Nick, we are, yeah. We don't have your screen. We don't see your screen. Are you planning to share? Your you don't screen? see, what do you use? Uh, just screen. a slide deck. Oh, it's not sharing just my general screen? Oh. Hold on. Better. Can you see that? Yeah. yeah. Better cool. or it's, it's, it's accurate? It's cool. <laughs> okay, perfect. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, I can see that I'm sharing my screen, but obviously others can't. So yes, this feedback is uh, much, much desired. Okay, and so you can see here, I'll start again, um, that we have some general information about the boot camp but we have a page for each individual session throughout the bootcamp. And so just down the right side here, because this is the intro to the Unix shell, give that a click. And um, if any helper wants to jump or drop that session link into the chat, that'd be great. Now, um, there's two things that each uh, session page has. The first one is down here. If you want to follow along with the slides, please do. We also have the slides um, available afterwards, so you don't have to follow along in the lesson. Um, but really the main part for this session and subsequent sessions is this introduction for uh, this info for learners pages in the wiki. So if you click this read more tab, wait for it to load data, 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 um, a couple of things will pop up. So anybody who is in person, um, if you could click this link and just check in, just because we're trying to keep track of our attendance, it's not punitive or anything, but just seeing who is coming out for this. Um, there is a workshop feedback form. I'll get to that in just a little bit. Um, we have some useful links and this kind of structure duplicates itself for all the sessions. But for this one, um, we have the software carpentries and a few other links that I'll be referencing. And then as we go down, it's all of the commands and exercises that I'll be covering over. So, so as I'm going through the slides, you'll have access to everything that I'm doing, that the exercises right here. So um, while it is optional to follow along with us, I really do encourage you to, to, if you're planning to engage, which this session is meant to be really engaged with, to get onto this page and follow along through that. Um, Cool, I can jump back to this now. Um, can people see my slide yes. deck screen? Or do I have, okay, perfect. Never know these days. Um, another housekeeping thing, this is a hybrid learning environment. We, uh, we tried something new. And so um, we have, I, I'm in the Okanagan. There are people jumping in virtually um, from all over. And then there are people in the Vancouver room as well. Um, in order to handle this, um, if you are virtual, please submit a question to the uh, Q&A or, or by raising your hand and we'll call upon you. We can have a chat or answer your question textually. If you are in the Vancouver room and you hear me speaking and you have a question, just raise your hand in that room. One of the helpers in that room will flag it. They'll stop me. I can answer it there. And so um, this is the first time I've done a hybrid room like this before, but I think it's going to work. We can all just be a bit patient with each other and uh, we'll make it happen. 
Um, one last thing, um, it is assumed that you can connect to Sockeye for this session, that this was uh, advertised for all of our sessions as a prerequisite. Um, we created a number of videos to help you do this. We hosted the open office hours yesterday. If this is something that you haven't done, in that OSF page, there is a page for uh, for information for connecting to Sockeye. If you want to start doing that now, that'd be great. But um, the vast majority of this lesson does take place in Sockeye, so it is a requisite for this. Um, and I think this is the last, I hope it is. Um, we want your feedback, right? Like this is the first time that we've run these type of sessions and we're, we're looking for feedback on content, pacing, just anything that we've done. And the way that we're trying to solicit that is for online learners, when the um, your Zoom link closes down, you'll be automatically prompted to uh, give us a feedback form. It's super lightweight. There's two multiple choice questions and an open uh, open free text box. Um, for those who are in person, as you saw on the OSF page, there is that feedback form as well. And, and please, like we're, we're not doing this for ourselves. We're trying to make our training more user centric. So the more that um, you provide us with feedback, the more our training can be based around your needs. Okay. Okay, housekeeping's over. I can finally get into the session. I've been waiting for this for so long. All right, and so um, to start things off, we are going to begin by introducing the Unix shell, talk about what it is and why you would use it. Um, we're then going to start navigating through files and directories using the Unix shell. Um, we're going to move in and actually start working with files and directories. And then we'll finish by putting it all together with a, what I think is a fun little exercise. We'll see, it might go off the rails, but uh, I'm hoping it does. A um, couple notes that I just talked about what the session is. Um, it's important to, I think, say that what the session isn't, and that this is not at all a complete Unix lesson. And, and really, this is a pared down session on Unix with the objectives being to build a foundation for you to follow along with the boot camp, for you to understand a handful of commands. So as you go through the trajectory of the boot camp, you have an understanding of, of what's going on. You're able to follow along. And, and the second bullet point, to, to build a foundation for you to grow your skills that when it comes to any type of computational concepts or language, a big part of, of being able to become proficient at those skills is self-instruction. But when you first start, it's almost like you don't have the tools to teach yourself. And so what we're trying to do is establish that foundation so you understand how to ask questions. And one of the best things about Unix is it's a very well-documented concept and language. And so understanding how to formulate questions in Google um, is, is really a cornerstone because all of us Google things all the time and it's just, it's part of how you, uh, how you go about doing this. Okay, so with that long winded intro, we can start and just, um, this is going to be a bit awkward, but because we are recording this and we're aiming to timestamp our videos, I'm going to give a quick two second pause before I jump in to help with the production. So one, two, three in my head. Okay, so let's talk about what is the shell. All right, so the objectives for this section are going to be explain what the shell is and how it relates to computing. And then to also identify the components of a command prompt. So jumping into this, we have the graphical user interface, otherwise known as the GUI. Um, this is what everyone is familiar with. It's the most widely used way to interact with a personal computer. On the left, you have a Mac. On the right, you have PC. You have all these applications. You can click on them. Things will come up. It looks very nice. That's not what the shell is. The shell is something called like a command line interface or a CLI. You might've heard that term before. And it's essentially a box to type instructions to your computer and for your computer to follow those instructions and then to do it. And so kind of breaking down all of that stuff that you see with the graphical user interface into um, just yeah um, an instruction kind of type-based form. Now, Wanting to stay out of the weeds in this, because this is very much a Unix on Sockeye session, and we're not going to get into your home computer, it is worth noting that there are different brands of shells that all look differently and essentially work the same. There, there's um, some caveats to that, but for the purposes of this, they all work the same. And each shell begins with some information about where you are in your computer. And so you see here, this is on um, the Windows PowerShell on PC. Um, starts off in the C drive, and you can see 
the users folder, um, Rockland, and is my last name, so that's me. And this would be in my documents folder. And that's what it would look like in Windows PowerShell. Now, if you are a Mac user, it might look something like this. This is what Jeff's computer looks like. So Jeff's G at Jeff's MacBook Pro, and this is what his documents folder looks like. Uh, moving on, uh, th this is uh, Git Bash. This is what I prefer. And you can see um, a very different slate of information about my computer, but the same type of thing. And this is also what the documents folder looks like. Um, it's, this isn't super important for this course, but it is important that as you go on and start using Unix, things might look a little bit different depending on how you're using it. And that's just how it is. Now, one thing that is important is to understand that each shell has what's called a prompt. And this is telling you, it's indicating the shell is waiting for input, it's waiting for you to type instructions. And so the prompts can be different types of symbols. In the, the PowerShell, it's this little side carrot thing. In the MacBook Pro or the MacBooks, it's uh, this the percentage sign. And then in Git Bash, as well as others, um, it's the dollar sign. And it's just, it's very valuable to know which prompt you're dealing with because you want to just ensure that if, if you don't see a prompt, it means something is happening or it's some sort of command is either stuck or processing and um, what you would try to type in there wouldn't necessarily work. Now, I had mentioned that the shell is a box to type instructions to your computer. And I very much believe that's true. But you can't just type anything here. So I wrote type instructions here and all of these problems came up. It didn't work because much like any other computer program, it has its own vocabulary and grammar and it doesn't accept human language commands. And so a big part of what we're going to be doing here is talking about the commands that Unix accepts and how to navigate your own computer, but and as, as well as Sockeye. Now, Wondering why you would do this, right? The GUI just seems so much easier. It's intuitive. We've all been trained to do it basically, or most of our lives at least. But when you start thinking of problems of scale, and so this first one, let, let's say you had a thousand spreadsheets of files and you just wanted to copy the third line of each file to a new file. If, if you can even fathom what that would look like from a manual perspective, it'd be an absolute nightmare. Not only in the fact of it just being super repetitive and time consuming, but the chances of you making an error are quite high. Um, just to switch kind of disciplines, depending on what you're doing, if you were working with 300 pages of text and you wanted to copy every sentence with the word migration to a new file, you'd run into the same type of issue. And so right, again, painstaking work, chances of committing errors, it's just not something you wanna do. Now, now, with this said, that, that this is all something that can be done on your home computer, but all of the interactions with Sockeye are done with the Unix um, shell. And so not only is this valuable for your own computing, but in order to kind of get onto Sockeye, the, these skills and concepts are really fundamental to being able to navigate in the system. And so with that said, um, how are people doing? Are there, are there any questions at this point? None, I just explained things so perfectly. Okay, if I'm um, going once, twice. Okay, perfect. George, I think I can pass it to you to pick up on the next section. Sure, thanks, Nick. Let me share my screen. Okay, um, I hope everyone can see my screen. Cool. <clears throat> right, so this section is is easy and most of you know this already, so I'm just gonna not gonna spend too much time on this and navigating files and directories. Uh, the goal is um, um, it's straightforward. So I'm going to talk about something about a file and directory and then move on to the absolute path and the relative path so that you can navigate your directory and a file. And you will need to connect to Sakai for this session and we will give you time to build your connection. And 
First of all, files. What are files? In computer science, files are objects that store data, information, settings, or commands. Directories, what are directories? Directories are also called folders. They are units that hold files or other directories. Path, <clears throat> uh, what is a path? Again, in computer science, path is a way to identify a location in a directory tree hierarchy. And this is an example of, of directory here tree hierarchy and <clears throat> normally um, your directories will be separated by slashes if you are using windows and you will see a, a backward slash but since Sakai is based on Linux then you will see forward slashes again same thing again so um, question what is the path to this directory because this directory is under Rockland. Rockland directory is under users. So the full path to this directory is slash users slash Rockland slash desktop. Once again, you see these forward slashes because Sakai is based on um, Linux. Okay, so quick exercise. Assuming you are here, and what is the path to music folder? And what is the path to this S Club 7 folder? That's the answer. So this music folder is under Rockland, under users. We've explained this before. And this one is under party and parties on the music. That's why you're seeing this full path pointing to this S Club 7. Um, <clears throat> let me ask you, if you want to copy and paste something in your shell, in your command line, how are you gonna do that? Suppose you are going to uh, copy this command and put it in your shell. And um, since I'm using Windows PowerShell, so copy um, Control C and Control V will work. But I guess if I'm using Mobile X term or um, Windows Command Prompt, this will not work. But Control plus Insert and Shift plus Insert will work. So just keep that in mind. If you have something long and you want to copy into your command line, control insert, shift insert. This PWD command, what is it? It's print working directory. It shows you the current path, the current path uh, of, of your uh, location, so where you are. This ls command, that is for listing the contents of a directory. If you have um, files, if you have uh, subdirectories in a directory and you execute the ls command, it will show everything you have in your current directory. ls command. Um, so <clears throat> in Sakai, I have this long command. So that is for listing the content in this exercise data directory. Why I need all of this? Because this directory is under shell lesson data and that is under this Unix lesson and then all the way up to the root. So. That's the reason I need to list all of the path and then this final directory. <clears throat> and I execute that. This is what I get. I have all the blue ones and the white ones. So the blue ones are directories. The white is file. 
something to keep in mind. <clears throat> and it depends on the settings though. So if your administrator set it up in a different way, then you may not see the blue or the white thing, you may see something else. But in Sakai, blue is directory, white is file. This CD command, <clears throat> so we use this CD command to change directory. And the syntax is a CD space and the path to the directory, your target directory. And this CD dot dot command is used to move you up one directory. And if you want to move two directories, two levels up, you would need to execute cd dot dot command twice. Say you're typing cd dot dot and hit enter, and then you type cd dot dot command and you hit enter again. So <clears throat> absolute path and a relative path. What is absolute path? Absolute path is the full path to a file or to a directory. In this example, suppose you are here and you want to go to this DMX directory and you would type cd space and then for the slash user, that's this one, and Rocklin music party and DMX. The, and then you need to add the leading and um, for the slash because this is the absolute path. Can, that means you want the full path to the directory you want to go. Relative path is relative to your present working directory. Again, we use the example here. Same again, we are at music and we want to go to DMX and the command will be different this time. It's simple, just a CD space party and the DMX. The reason we don't need all of this is because we are here and this your target directory is under your current directory. So that's relative to your current directory. And that's the reason we introduce, we use the relative path and there's no leading uh, for the slash if you are going to use a relative path. Hey, George. Yeah. You think um, maybe we can kind of rewind things a bit and actually show people what this looks like in Sakai and give a bit of a demo so they can start playing around with some of these commands? Mm hmm Yeah, uh, so, um, yeah, so may maybe uh, do you want to, let's bring things back a bit to to where they, they have that, um, the, the, the allocation code in the slide maybe. So yeah, throw it in reverse. Allocation Back it up, Terry. Code. Yeah, so perfect. Yes. Yeah. So everybody, so if you look at the top of the page there for that CD arc project, TR bootcamp, that's a path, and you can find that in, in the OSF page. And it would be great if you could copy that into the command line into Sakai now. We'll give you a couple minutes to connect to Sakai. And then we can walk through what these commands look like and actually what the Sakai experience feels like. Because, you know, George, you're doing a great job explaining this. But just, you know, I, I know just as a learner of my, myself of this stuff, you know, not super recently, but fairly recently, it's it's very tricky to, to think of this stuff conceptually. And it's nice to um, to see what it looks like and to feel so. Let's give people maybe two minutes to start getting onto Sakai, and then we can start playing around with what these commands actually uh, feel and look like. And yes, if um, Liz, I think mentioned, yeah, if you have problems accessing it, we will have helpers trying in the background, but we're not going to spend too much time on this because the, the goal of the session really is to, to play around with these commands and, and get a feel for how Sakai, uh, how Sakai is. And George, just seeing, uh, you typed in accidentally. Unit, unit. Yeah, yeah, unit. So, and you know, I think that that's a great thing to start this off on because 
one of the things that I still do it and I lose my mind is just when you're typing a long path that one letter wrong it, it'll tell you that it's not there you can get very frustrating so it, it it is very much an exercise in typing as well as it is understanding a system and this new language that we're going to be practicing okay so we just need a few minutes to help those in the room and then can resume okay perfect now are there any people out there virtually who uh who we can't see who need some assistance with this um we, we are doing quite well for time, so uh, we, we, we can stew in this and give you some hands. Um, so the question, should you get the shell lesson data users line? Um, did, did you press that CD um, command that that copy paste that is in the, the OSF? And you, you can just respond in the Q&A if you want, or if you'd like to raise your hand, um, we, can, uh, we can have a little chat if that's something you want to hash out, because I understand that this can be quite confusing. And so in order to do that, you can just raise your hand if you want to do that. So um, yeah, J Jordan, let us know if, if you do have any more questions about this or if we can help walk you through this. And, and that goes to other people as well. If you, if you are struggling with this, if you have questions about how this works, please, please let us know. Oh, no microphone. Okay. So with that said, Jordan, did, um, did you type that CD command? And if so, okay, perfect. And so when you type the CD command, so if you look at what George has in his window, do you see um, your username at login and then Unix lesson and then the dollar sign shell prompt? Yeah, so George is just highlighting that now. And, and I'm basing this to Jordan. Okay, perfect. That that worked. Okay, so that that's it now. George pressed one other command to get that users line. Um, I think we'll give. Uh, oh, yeah. So the, that's exactly it. He pressed the ls command to reveal that. But just to show what um that cd command should look like, you should have your username at login and then the Unix lesson and then that dollar sign. That's the command prompt in Sockeye to let you know that the system is waiting for you to to give it an input. Hi, Nick. I think we are good here. Okay, you're good to go. Okay, um, so George, yeah, so maybe you can start walking people through this, but then uh, just giving them a chance to play around so they can actually see and ask questions about this type of thing. All right, Nick and George, uh, just as you're getting started, um, would you be able to make your terminal a little bit larger um, and a little bit, I guess, wider on the screen, just so people in the room can see you? a little bit larger? How's that for everyone? You follow? Good. Okay, perfect. And if you have any issues seeing it, just let us know. Okay, cool. So <clears throat> once again, <clears throat> we talked about this CD command and also the LS command. 
ls command is for listing the content of a directory and i'm just going to do an example here so if i want to know what's in this directory oh by the way what i did here is to highlight the text and then i right click on my mouse so then i copied it and this is what I have in this directory. Okay, so that is the, uh, once again, I have a, a leading forward slash because this is absolute path because I want to go to this directory. And just let us know if you have any questions. Uh, PWD. Let's see where I am right now. I'll just type enter PWD. This is my current working directory because I, I went to this directory using this CD command. Uh, what is okay? Uh, what I'm getting? All right. I have this caption. Just one moment. Is everything okay, George? Is there anything I can assist with? Uh, it's just, uh, it does auto Closed captioning. Okay, better now. Because you see this just one moment, and I said that, and it's it's showing up, and it's blocking um, some of the screen here. It's, it's better now. <clears throat> okay, so uh, yeah, that's PWD. LS command, that's this one, for listing the content. Um, just to readjust to the screen, make it slightly smaller. And here you see the blue ones, they are directories. This is a file. And CD command is to go to a specific directory. That's this one. Or I can do another CD. Uh, I highlight this part and I right click on my mouse. And then I am in this directory project. Guess that a lot of stuff in it. Oh uh, yeah. Ooh. Okay, and let's keep moving on. Uh, <clears throat> this cat command. So what is this cat command? Cat command is for printing the whole content of a file. And yeah, just a lot of stuff in this arc project. These are all of the allocation codes anyway. Um, say <clears throat> if you have a file or if you want to look at what's in it and there are different ways to look at the content. Cat command is one of them. And the syntax is, syntax is cat space and then file name. So I'll do a little example here. I think I'll go to uh, the, no, not that again. So, so George, like everybody, everybody is in the um, the Unix lesson. So yeah, maybe, maybe move back. Okay, to I pick yeah. this one. Yeah, yeah. Because so we have um, exercise here, but yeah. Um, so I go to this directory and see what's in there. And then I saw two subdirectories and I want to go inside this one. So I use CD command 
because this is um, a relative path, so I don't need to have a leading slash. And I ls the content of that directory. This is what I see. So I have four directories and the one file. <clears throat> and this is a file. And if I want to take a look at it, I can use cat and then file name. This is what it has in this file. One, two, three, four, five, five lines, and they are all numbers. So this is how this cat command works. Concatenation. Uh, right, <clears throat> so here's a little exercise. And four questions. First of all, what is the full path to this file? Methane.pd pdb and George. Yeah. I, I think um it might be good to help people kind of struggle through this a bit. And there's also a place in a padlet where um people can go through this exercise. Um, do you mind if I share my screen quickly? No, no, you go ahead. Okay, thank you. All right. So, a couple of things. All right, can people see my screen? Can I get a quick thumbs up from somebody or I'm just gonna, oh, this is not what I wanted. I wanna be an add-on, okay. So, one thing that, so George was talking about the all the commands that were there. And so, starting in this Unix directory, if you press the ls command, we have two directories. And so, the shell lesson data is some mock data that we've designed for people to be able to play around with. And, and so, as George mentioned, and then please follow along with me. Jeff, uh, you have a hand. Let me. I'm seeing your. Um, oh, are you not seeing yeah. my. Uh, I'm seeing OSF, not, not um, uh, shell. My, okay. I'm so sorry. Can you see that now? Yes. Okay, perfect. So is, if we are in this, this, this Unix lesson directory that is kind of this higher level for the bootcamp, if you press ls, that's the list command of what's in there. And we have these two directories, shell, lesson, data, and users. Now, as George mentioned, when we talk about directories, th these are folders. And you can tell that they're folders because they're blue. Um, it, um, and, and we'll see some, some text files that are in white. And so this shell lesson data is the mock data that we're going to be playing with. So if everyone can follow along, if we can press CD for change directory and then go into the shell, lesson, data, give people a couple seconds to catch up. Three, two, one, boom. All right, and then you can see here that it's no longer in this Unix lesson that we're in the shell lesson directory. So Sockeye and, and other command prompts, they do a good job in trying to tell you where you are. But again, like if you ever feel lost about where you are, you can always hit that PWD print working directory and it'll show you where you are. Jeff, go ahead. I'm lazy. I, okay. I, do, I do the LS. I see what's there. I want to type shell. I just type CD space S and then I hit tab. Is that okay? Working? Yes, yeah, so what Jeff did, um, here, so I'll go up one more. So if he does CDS, and you can see it fills in. Jeff's laziness is actually excellent in the computing world. I didn't want to get ahead of people, Jeff, but I love that you're sharing this with us. Okay, and so um, with that being said, if other people have suggestions, they want to pipe in, talk about things that they know about, please do. This, um, I know it's virtual or hybrid. I'm not in the room as anybody, but this is meant to be interactive. Okay, so as we go in, let's check out what's in the shell lesson directory. So we can press LS and you can see that we have two more directories. We have two more blue files. And so um, let's check out what's in that exercise data. So I can press CD. And as Jeff said, I can just type E and press tab and it fills it in for me. It's a beautiful thing. Laziness can get you a long way. All right, and now you can see we are in this exercise data. Now, if I go LS, you can see that we have um, a number of other uh, folders. So we have the blue ones, directories, white is a text file, 
as George just showed, if I wanted to see what's in a text file, I could press cat numbers.txt and it lists out what is in that file. Now let's say I wanted to drill down even further just because I'm curious and I wanted to go to the proteins file folder, go down there, press ls. Now we have all of these files. Now, if I were to press cat and let's say I'm interested in octane, PD, PDB, you can see that th these files are a bit more fulsome, right? They have information about the author. They have information about some actual data that's going on. Now, um, one thing that um, was brought up that if you want to, you know, with, with the CD command, it'll bring you down in directories, but it won't bring you up on its own. But if you press CD dot dot, we're now in exercise data. So we're at that level again. If you want to do it again, you can press CD dot dot. Oh, we're back in the shell lesson data. Uh, Nick, uh, I think your um, screen is too long. So oh. could, you, could, could you type clear and then make yeah. your cursor back to the top? Yeah, so where does it draw off of? Just so I'll keep pressing clear around the middle. Okay, how much did that miss? Okay, <laughs> all yeah, right, so- uh, Sorry. No, 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 thanks, Jerry. Um, so reading view, okay. Sorry, I'm gonna rip through these notes here. And so we do have an exercise. And so I'm going to do a short screen here, but if I share my screen, can people see the OSF now? Yes. Can I get someone, you can see the OSF? So if you go down, down, down under all of these um, commands, you'll see the Padlet for exercise two. And so if you click on that, do, 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 wait for it to load, you can see that all of these questions are there. And so if you want to enter a question under it, you can just press that plus sign, write something, and it will allow you to. Now, I'm going to give you maybe five to seven minutes to start playing around with these. Um, See if you can, yeah, see how far you can get. There might be one of them that we didn't teach you the full command that you might have to Google, but um, it, it, it we'll see how people do. And please ask questions as you're playing with these, uh, with these questions. And please do let us know if you have any questions. So yeah, five, five minutes, see if you can answer these by playing around in Salka. Not what I'm clicking on here. All right, I see the answer starting to uh to trickle in. That's fun to see that. Um, I think just because they are the questions here, I can leave this screen if people want to see. If there are differences in your answers, please feel confident to answer something different. Um, just because it's not only, you know, maybe other people are wrong, but it is good feedback to see what you are thinking um, in doing these. Because if if you do get an answer that might not be correct, that's because we did a bad job of explaining it. So uh, we, we should learn from that.
All right. See these answers trickling in, love it. All right, uh, people are coming in, so it uh, looks good. Um, I'll give people a few more minutes to start doing this type of thing, and um, then we can go from there. Not a lot of people are touching that last question. It might be a it might be a tricky file to find. Maybe maybe we made the the mock data a bit too dense. In which case, uh, my apologies. Um, but I'll give you maybe one more minute to start playing around, and then uh, we can go through all of these together. Okay, so if you haven't quite poked around, that's no problem. We can tackle these questions one by one. So here are the answers, but um, let's let's go through these together. Can um, can people see my command prompt? And is it the right size and good? Jeff, yeah, how's just, it looking in that room? Looks good. Jeff, it's it's good. Yeah, it's it, it's good. And this is Jerry. Oh. <laughs> Thanks, Jerry. Okay, so for this first one, what is the full path to methane.pdb? So I think that was down. So where is that? It's down in the exer oh, exercise data. LS. I think it's in proteins. LS. And then yes. Um, so looking at the answers here, can people see when I switch back and forth between screens like that? Jerry? Yeah, they look good. Okay, so look, and so you can see the Padlet page? Yes, I can. Okay, so I, I see that we have two different answers in this Padlet page, and this is great. So in this question, what's the full path to the file methane.pdb? So if I'm here and I take print working directory, you can see that because I'm in the proteins directory, it'll take me all the way up to proteins, but it actually doesn't list this methane file. And you can see here, some people didn't quite get that. Some people put it at the end. Um, it, it sounds nitpicky because you can see this, but as we get going further along with, um, with sorry, the, the workshops and you start getting onto Sockeye to run jobs, you'll see that knowing file pass is tremendously important. So that this was a good exercise to test that and just, um, I understand how people would have got to those answers, so it's great that they weren't out of left field, but uh, it's a good little learning experience. So in order to figure out the author for a methane.pdb, um, you'd use the cat command, right? Because that can kind of show what's all in there. Um, oh, perfect. Let's do some other stuff. So if I go cat methane.pdb, oh, no, <laughs> didn't type it right. Of course, why would I type it right on the first try? And so I can look around here and I can see Dave Woodcock is listed under the author. Um, I see that someone put Rockland N as the author. Um, I'm not sure if they just thought that I, I made this or if there is another way to do this and not at all wanting to call people out if they don't feel comfortable with that. But if the person is who made it um, wants to share how they arrived at that answer, either via text or raise their hand, um, I'd be interested to hear that but um, I, I am going to keep going on. Now, 
this one is fun. Um, so what command would you type to move from the proteins to the shell directory? So you see here, we got four people who press CD. Yes. Yep. I'm trying to stop you, but the person who did the R Rock, uh, Nick Rockland, the, I'm trying to look at the answer that you just asked about. Um, uh, yes, he said he can explain it. He's in our um, in person room in Vancouver. Do you want to? Oh, you want me to convey sure. the message? Oh, yes. Sir. Thank you for catching that. Yeah, I can't see anybody in that room, but, but love hearing that in person feedback. So I, I, I guess I didn't think about doing it. What I did was ask for the details on the list. And it tells you who the owner I think of the file. And I owner and you're the owner and you created the file. So I thought that people would ask my authorship. So I did I did LS minus T to see all the files in the folder. And so so I just misunderstood the question. Does, does that make sense? Did you hear that, Nick? It's he did LS minus T and he saw the details of who created the files rather than the author. So it's just a misunderstanding easily made of, of what we were asking. Yeah, and to be oh. honest, I, that like the way that you interpreted that is, is great. And just to share with everybody, um, at some, we will, I think it's in the next session, um, showing commands to see who actually created a file. And so talking about authorship, obviously it's the creator and it was me. Um, that's awesome that you have, like, you obviously have a little bit of background or maybe you Googled that. And so knowing how to look up the authors of and the creators of files is hugely important. So that's great. Um, I'm gonna count that one as right. Everyone gets a check mark for that. So that, that that's super awesome. Um, plowing forward to this next one. So you can see here that people typed in CD dot dot twice because that's how we had discussed it, right? If you wanna go up a directory, you can just press that twice. But you see this person, they may have Googled it. And I did give the hint that one of these questions might not have been something that we talked about, but maybe something to Google. And so to conceptualize that, it's not moving up one directory, it's moving up two. And so in order to do that, you just type in that CD dot dot slash dot dot, and that'll actually move you up two directories. So um. All of those answers are correct. And just it's, again, this is an example how Googling those taking, or sorry, let me, let me step back from what I'm explaining. Taking what you're doing that's very specific and then generalizing it enough where you can type a question into Google and then seeing, you know, how do I move up two directories? And so that's great. And so the last line of Nini, that's um, everybody seemed to nail that. So um, where is that one? I think it's, um, I made this exercise too long ago. I can't remember where it is. Is it in? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. So it's cat. And then that's how you would just go to do that. Now, I'm not going to type in that full one just because I think people can understand how they got that. But this is going to give a bit of a precursor. So in the OSF page, um, can you see the OSF page as I switch screens again? It doesn't always do that for me. I'm asking Jerry. Yeah, we can. Okay, perfect. So at the top of this page, the software's carpentry Unix shell lesson. I'm just gonna click on that and quickly show you. So this is inspired by that, but much more pared down. As you go down to things like pipes and filters and loops, um, we're not gonna touch on this at all today, but this is where you can actually start answering this type of question where I want the last line in this file to be printed and maybe to print it to another file. And so really taking um, those affordabilities of Unix into to the next step. And so that was a bit of a, you know, what, what can be done with Unix, but also can be done in a bit more of a manual way. Okay, so, um, are there any questions after that section? How do we get to the Nini file? Okay, so it was in the Pacific, the North Pacific Gyre. So if I go up um, one directory, you can see that the shell, oh, sorry, can people see this? I, I, I keep forgetting that I need to ask. Yeah, we can, see, we can okay. see this. Okay, so it seems like it's working now. So here, let me just clear that. 
And so if I go LS, it's in that North Pacific gyre. And so if I go CD, North uh, uh, Nick, uh, yep. you move your mod, um, terminal like two, um, two up. <laughs> oh, it's too high now. <laughs> yeah, 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 too high. Oh man, that's crazy. Okay, <laughs> is that good? All right, so if I go up one, so in that shell lesson data, um, a lot of the stuff that we were looking at was in this exercise data, but this one is in that North Pacific gyre. And so if you go down there, there is all of the Nini files. Um, to go back, which one was it? It was 1729A. So if I go cat Nini 1729A.txt. Oh, that was wrong. What did I do wrong? What is something? Oh, I forgot the zero. There it is. Oh, typing lessons. And so you can see you get this long list um, here. I'll bring it up to the middle. And so you can see this is the last line of that mini file. And how would you find this file without browsing around? Um, so this is kind of a data management question, Jeff. Um, as your files go um, get bigger and your tree gets deeper, you can very much lose files. And um, th this isn't something that I'm going to touch on in this because we are staying fairly simplistic with this approach in Unix. But um, in that uh, that carpentry software le uh, lesson for the Unix, it gets into things like that about how you can start looking up files and finding things. Um, and it's based on wildcard. So uh, much like um, Boolean operators work when you're talking about Google searches or library searches, you can start doing things like that as well. Um, Jeff, are you satisfied with that answer or is that not enough? Oh, Boolean, sure. Yeah, us librarians, we know. All, all good. <laughs> yeah, but um, I, I do really um, encourage people to check out that Unix lesson, um, the way that they've structured it there are exercises built into the page with accordion so they don't show the answers right away um it, it is very friendly to walk yourself through especially after having done something like this um but that's a great question um are there any other questions before uh before we move on all right going once going twice no more questions for the rest of the session i'm just kidding please ask questions whenever you want but we can now move to the next section, um, counting to three to help with, yes. yes. We yes. have oh. a question in the room, um, but I couldn't hear it quite because I was also listening to you. Hold on one second. Yes. Could you walk through the, how to get to the software carpentries lesson once again from the OSF page? Just yeah, yeah, definitely. Page? So if you're on the, the, the intro to Unix page, it's right um, in the useful links. And I should have I should have introduced this at the beginning. Terrible teacher. You can throw rocks at me if you ever see me in person. Um, the useful links. So we have a Unix cheat sheet. So just some basic commands. Um, Unix flags, which I'll talk about in a bit. But the software carpentries is just right here. And so we're kind of been somewhere in here, although a bit of a pared down. But as you start going into things like pipes and filters, loops and shell scripts, you get into those bigger details. And there are more details in these two sections that I'm speaking to. Um, does that answer the person's questions? Are, are, are you satisfied with that answer or did you want more? That's a good way to follow up on questions. <laughs> satisfied, thanks Nick. Oh, satisfaction, <laughs> love it. Okay, um, I'm the worst. Are there any other questions before I continue? All right, well, that just built that natural pause in for this section. We are now going to shift to working with files and directories. All right, now the objectives of this session, we're gonna hit three. Um, the first one, we are going to start creating directory hierarchies. We're then gonna create files in that hierarchy using an editor and by copying and renaming existing files. And then we're gonna play around with deleting, copying and moving specific files and or directories around and really start getting a feel for how this might look like if uh, you were going about this on your own. 
All right, so if you could all please move to the top of the project. I think most people are there, but it's in that um, that Unix lesson. Oh, I lost it. All right, so if I um, if I do do the share screen, is this enough for size for either side to work, or do I need to adjust what? Uh, that's a Jerry question. Uh, I think it's all good. Okay. Um. Oh, yes, it's already 10 o'clock. Okay, yeah, so we, we can take a break. I did have a break scheduled, Liz. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, let's take a five to six, seven minute break. And then, um, yeah, stretch, get some coffee. And uh, if you have any questions, please drop them in the chat, but we can meet back here at 1010. Thanks for reminding me, Liz. Oh, this morning, I tell you.
All right, it is 1010. We're back on the board. I hope everyone had a good break. Um, sorry for forgetting something's coming in the chat. Yes. Okay, now Jerry's just dropping in some tips there. Thank you, Jerry. Love that. Okay, so I'll give everyone a second to jump back to the top of the project. So the Unix lesson part. And you can see here, I hope you can see here in my uh, command prompt, um, the Unix lesson is, is there. Oh, and Elizabeth is just shutting the front door for people. Love it. Mm. Oh, one more minute or so. Okay, we will wait. We'll wait patiently. And if you can just give me the word when we're ready to go, um, we can go. Where did I put my water? Oh, I'm gonna get up and get my water. As I'm awkwardly waiting in silence, other people can't see, but I'm in this big boardroom by myself and I just have so much space for activities. Okay, Nick, I think most people are back um, in the room here. If you want All to right. Thanks. Uh, Liz, I would love nothing more than to go ahead. Thank you for providing me with this opportunity. All right, so um, if everybody could move up to the top of the project, that Unix lesson, I'll give people a couple seconds to catch up. Um, I think most of you should be there. Sit down, prepare yourselves. Let's dive in. All right, so flowing forward, um, moving to some new commands. Um, very important one, the mkdir command. This is how you create new directories. Um, the syntax of it is quite straightforward, mkdir plus your directory name. And so all together here, we're going to do a three-step thing. So again, in this Unix lesson, we were playing with uh, this shell lesson data, but there's also this users file. And so I want everyone to move over to the users file by CD users. Uh, when you get in there, now you can see um, I have two of my own files. I'm so greedy, I couldn't just take one. But what I want people to do is to create their own file. And then I might even create a third one just to walk around with people as they do this. Um, Jeff, I see you have your hand raised. Uh, if, if we're supposed to switch to the users directory, I get uh, permission denied. Really? Are other people getting that message? I re okay, interesting. Um, so what if I uh Can people try moving to the users one directory? I don't know why this is happening with that. Is that working for people? Interesting. I got permission denied as well. Um, Jerry, Jeff, you know why there'd be permission denied at the, the, the directory level in this folder? Uh, could you show me where you are? <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Um, I'm in, so I, we're in the, the the Unix lesson, so right under the project space. Uh, could, could you type P, oh, okay. Could you type L, L, L and enter? Yeah, uh, could you change the um, group name to uh, from Rockin to TR-Bootcamp? 
dash one dash rw. So uh, Sorry, by pardon. by ch mod. Oh, I have to ch mod. Okay, so yeah, uh, uh, the um should be um g. Oh, so sorry. Um, C H O, um, W N. Sorry. C H O W what? Yeah, C H. Oh, we lost it. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> Could you press a multiple enter? <laughs> oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. So C H O W N. Change owner. Um. Space. Um, so, um, type R O C H L, uh, colon, uh, no space, um, T R dash bootcamp dash one, yeah, uh, space user, users, uh, okay. wait, wait, uh, so. Oh yeah, you users, yes. Okay. Could you type L, L, L again? That worked. That worked, Nick. Okay, perfect. Sorry, I didn't realize that the access would um, default to making that private. Learning things about supercomputers every day, people. All right. So if we go, let's try this again. Refresh, CD users. Can people get there? Okay, it works now. Love that success. Okay, now, now that we're in the users directory, um, if people could go in and create their own directories by using this mkdir command, and then whatever name that they would like to give themselves. And so I'll give you a few minutes with that, but we're going to start building a hierarchy here. So um, yeah, okay, I see people populating it already. That's beautiful. Give you a couple minutes to do this. Oh, so um, Stephanie, we are in user, just regular users, not users one. U users one was something I was just using to test if um, where the default was coming from. And uh, yes, J Jerry helped sort that out. So yes, if you could move to this directory. Okay, I'll give people, thanks. Okay, perfect. Um, okay, and so once people have created their directory, I'm going to use this Nick one. I see um, a few people have gone in there. Um, move to your new directory with CD. So I'm gonna go CD, Nick one. You can go to your own respective uh, directories. I'll clear this, bring it back down. And then when you print, uh, working directory, it should put you in that new directory. All right, I'm going to plow forward here, but please let me know if you have questions. Oh. All right, so next thing I want to introduce is something called Nano. And so Nano is a text editor to create and edit plain text files. Like This isn't something for tables or images or other media, but it's just to create plain text files. They call it an editor, but it's kind of a creator that you can do within the Unix shell, both on Sockeye and on your home computer. Um, the syntax is fairly simple. Feel free to follow along this. I'm going to give you a demo, so it might actually, or I'm going to give you a chance to play with this, so it might just be helpful to watch me play first. But if I just type in nano, press enter, it opens this text editor. And so I can say, hello there. Cool. And then, yeah, you can type more type more lines, and you can have this text document. Now, ooh, I want to, um, Nick? Uh, yeah? Uh, we, again, can't see your- Yeah, screen. yeah, yeah, I, I'm just sizing things out because I want people Thank to be able to- you. Can, can you see the bottom and the top, Liz? Uh, let's see. Uh, yeah. Like, can, can you see the, the get help and things like that? Yes. Okay, perfect, because that that's, um. That, that, that is key to this. So it's kind of being, actually, you want to, oh, if I, no, I want to full screen that. What a mess I am. All right, we'll get there. So yeah, if I stretch it out so you can see what all these commands are, in order to work around with Nano, 
um, you can see that there's control and a number of different um, commands here. I'm not going to go into either of them, but you can play with how those work later. But to get out of a file, you press Command X for that exit. Oh, oh no, I'm not in it. And so it'll say save, modify, buffer. It gives you the answer, yes or no. I want to do yes, so I press Y. Take me in here, so Y. And then file name to write. Um, I'm just going to call this hello.txt. Now it is important to put some sort of file extension afterwards. Um, for the uh, purpose of today, it's all going to be txt files, um, but there's definitely others you can. And you can see now, get back to the regular screen, ls, and now you can see I have a few others in there as well. Okay, so going uh, forward with Nano, um, if you want to just name the file right away, I can go nano hello2.txt. And it'll open up a new file for me right away, that same editor. I'm just going to jump out of that. And then the last function of Nano, and I'll give you a chance to practice all of this, is you can open a pre-existing text file to, to play with it. So if I go, nope. So if I go nano hello.txt, it brings me to that file. I can start giving some edits, and then you can play around with that. Again, control X. Do you want to save? Yes gives you the file name, and you're good to go. Now, jumping back into the slides, oh, something up in the Q&A. Is it CR letter for nano command, control letter for nano commands? Um, those commands at the bottom are really, yes, essentially, yes, it is. And so, Jeff, uh, just to go back into that, uh, I'm stuck in the Q&A. How do I get out? So you can see, yeah, so it's command and then all of those letters, sorry, not command, I'm saying the wrong one, control. And so those will give you all those functionalities and I'll stretch out my screen so you can see hey, what. Thanks, thanks, Nick. It's just the word command versus the word control. Yeah, no, I'm slipping over my tongue today, Jeff. Tuesday morning. And, 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 you, and you have complete command and control over us, so don't worry about it. I don't think I have command or control over you, Jeff, but I love uh, that you said I did. Um, okay, so jumping out of this. now. Getting back into the slides, I can full screen this for now. Um, talking about file naming in Unix, um, this is some RDM 101, but it avoids special characters or spaces in a file name, including period slashes or spaces. Um, this is because these special characters can actually be read by Unix and other command lines as, as having meaning. And so they can really alter the way that your your um, the behavior of the shell will work, and they can mess with how your file is interacting with it. So so try to avoid these types of things. Um, in order to separate words, you can use the hyphen, you can use the underscore. Um, when doing dates, this year 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 month month date date format is probably the best because it will order things correctly. And then this last one, when you're versioning things, um, do the 01, 02 format, just because um, of the way that numbers order that sometimes that uh, they will, numbers under 10 can come up in positions that you don't want them to. So with that said, and giving you a chance to play with Nano and please ask questions. Um, in your personal directory, oh, I'm getting past, oh, come on, come on now. Um, I want you to do three things. I want you to create three TXT files. Um, one containing your three favorite songs or musical artists, one containing your three favorite movies, and one containing your three favorite books. If it's not three and you just want to do one, that's fine. If you just want to create blank files because it's easier, that's cool. We are going to do things with these files though. So if you are planning on following along, please do create three files and name them however you see fit. And I'll give you a couple of minutes to play around with that. And as I said, please ask any questions that you do have. Oh, and I'm realizing I should take a look at what others like. Um, the permission settings won't allow for that, unfortunately. Um, I'm going to change the mod on my...
All right. How are people doing? Do you need a couple more minutes? Right. Absolutely no feedback. That's cool. Um, I'll give you one more minute. One of your text files seems to be in the, the in Jerry's directory instead of your own. Um, did did you create it in your own directory, or did um did you move to his directory for some reason? That is very strange. Uh, which one are you talking about? Um, so I just got a message from Jordan. Uh, I cannot see. Um, um, oh. 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 Okay, Jordan, you are, um, you're one directory too high, so you're creating them in the boot camp directory and not in the Unix lesson directory. So from that boot camp directory, if you go here, I'll show you where you are. Um, so if you go CD, yeah, so you're you're here. And so if you just change down to this Unix lesson, oh, slash users then you'll be down with everybody else. Yeah, no no problem. Um, I think my explanations have been all over the map. So uh, thank you all for bearing with me. Uh, I appreciate your patience. All right, so I am going to move forward unless there's any major objections. Um, don't hear them, cool. All right, so plowing forward, we have a new command to learn. It is called the touch command. And this creates a file that doesn't have any content. So I'm going to move uh, back to my folder here. And so the way it would work, if I just wanted to create another movie, I would just write touch movies2.txt. And you can see that it's created there. Now, out of curiosity, not sure how much engagement I'm going to be getting, but um. Can anybody think of why it would be useful to create a file that doesn't have any content in it? You can raise your hand, you can jump in the Q and A, you can just hang tight and say nothing and I'll, uh, I'll probably answer you in 30 seconds, probably less. Oh, we have two participants raising hands, that's amazing. Um, I'm gonna pass it to Stephanie, Jeff, just because I've heard a lot from you, that's no slight. Um, I've asked, I think I've unmuted you, Stephanie. Can you speak? Yeah, yeah, I can speak. I think, okay. can you hear me? <laughs> I can hear you. That's beautiful. Thank you. <laughs> I, I was going to say, if you want to like write data to a file, but you haven't generated it yet. That's 100% what it is. And, and yeah, <clears throat> that, that's, that's, you articulated it perfectly. I don't even need to come up with my own words. You want to write data to a file that hasn't been created yet. So you go to directory, you create this empty file, and then it's ready to be written to. Um, wonderful. So yeah, to save stuff later on, Luis, that's also a great answer too. Yeah, so there are a few different use cases for it. Um, for the sake of HPC, that 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 reading or that, yes, that writing to an empty file is very valuable, but there can be a number of different use cases for it. I'm not going to go too much into this command, but it's useful, worth knowing that it's there. All right, now this is a useful command. Knowing how to copy a file. And so the copy the file, the syntax is CP, stands for copy, for your file path, your file name, and then where you want to put it. And this would copy a file um, that is going to keep its same name. So I remember I have these two directories. I have Nick1 and I also have Nick Rockland. So what uh, if I wanted to copy my, um, let's go movies2.txt. 
And I wanted to copy it to um, the ARC project. Oh, TR bootcamp one slash users slash Nick Rockland. Oh, cannot create file. I didn't create the right file path. Um, what did I do wrong there? Um, ah, in the user's file? Oh. Oh, Unix lesson, I forgot that one. Oh. You're seeing me fail over and over again, people. Oh, no. Um, oh, no, oh, I keep, I'm losing it. All right, one last time so you can see it work effectively. And if I don't nail it, then that just is what it is. Um, CP movies 2.txt. No, oh, it's really just not working. I'm not going to troubleshoot this year, but uh, it, it does usually work. Um, what if I just do it there? Oh, now I'm just not even in the same file there. Uh, huh. Having one of those days, people. There we go. Well, CP movies to TXT. And then if I go. Uh, boot. Oh, TR boot camp one. Hey, hey, it's there. And so if I go up to the boot camp, it'll be there. That was painful. I'm sorry. I should have just let it go. Um, you can see how this would work here. If you wanted to copy this, uh, here, I'll bring this bigger. This Kenny Chesney folder, you decided, you know, Kenny Chesney is also country, but he can be party too. And you wanted to copy it over there. CP, you go to that file path move it over to party, and then you'd have another file here. So give you a chance to play around with that. Oh, where, what happened here? Oh, everything is falling apart on me. Man. Oh. Why is it doing that? I'm sorry, everybody. Nick, while you're getting yourself sorted, I'd just like to explain your screw up, if I may. Um, yeah, because um, actually, uh, it, is a, it is really a key point to make, and um, you, you sort of glossed over it, and I really want to harp on your mistake. Uh, no, I'll stop driving it home. No, but, you, you do it all the time. Please, please harp uh, on the yeah. the, I think the important, so the two more most important take homes here are you're going to make a lot of errors in the command line. You're probably not going to break anything. So feel free, don't be scared to type something, mess it up. You're not gonna be able to delete anything on Sockeye, maybe on your computer, but we will give you um, um, strategies to minimize that. But you're not nothing, you're just gonna get an error message like Nick did, no file or directory. So the point there is one, um, don't be afraid to type something in and press enter. And two, um, what the command, the reason why, if you didn't catch it, um, why it kept, not working for him was because he was trying to move a file that didn't exist in the directory he was in. So he was trying to cp movies.txt. He was in the user's directory and that file wasn't there. If he wanted to copy that, he could copy that from wherever he is in the shell, in his, um, in his home, in the users, in the lessons. But what he would need to do is reference the full path the ARC project, TR bootcamp, to that file so the computer knows where to find it. Once he was in his um, user directory, Nick1, he was able to just specify the file name because the file was there. And you'll notice the place he was copying it to was in a different location, so he had the full path there. So it's one thing to think about when you're copying files. Um, if you're copying a file from a directory or to a directory that you're in, you just need, you don't need to specify the full path. If the file or directory exists elsewhere, you do need to specify that full path. So um, just the main thing around the files and don't be afraid to type in correct stuff. Usually um, as hard as the command line can be to learn or the steep learning curve, it is actually helpful in the error messages it gives you. It can give you a pretty good hint as to why something isn't working. Thanks, Nick. Yes. No, thank you for that. And just, I think I mentioned it right at the beginning. 
sometimes I lose my cool when I'm doing this. And yeah, live demo, I, I was getting flustered here and I stopped explaining myself clearly. So thank you, Jeff, for stopping and explaining what it is that I was trying to noodle through and couldn't quite articulate. Um, with that said, um, we, we do have another exercise for people to walk through. Um, in your personal directory, um, try creating a new directory called music and then copy the file with your three, three favorite songs to this new directory and you're gonna keep that same file name. Give you a couple minutes to play around with that and then we can uh, jump in together. All right, so if people have gone through this, I'm just showing you what this looked like. I am in Nick one. Oh, not even getting in. So if I go MK dir, I want to create music. Now I have a few uh, files. Sorry, Nick. Sorry yep. for the interruption. Uh, we need some uh, time to help the people in in the room. Oh, okay, perfect. Yes, sorry, sorry about that. Oh, I will give you more time to do this. <laughs> Thank you. No worries. And yet, um, for, for that syntax, remember that um, in the OSF page, all of um, what I'm doing is here. So you can follow along with these commands as well. It's just an easy copy paste to do. Hi, Nick. Uh, we're good now. Thanks for the pages. Yeah. OK, perfect. And so yeah, just to catch up, I did create this new music folder. And so to copy that movies uh, folder in to that, Oh, sorry, music. Uh, I'm going to CP um, songs. Sorry, I didn't title it right. And then I'm going to move it to the music directory. And so just like that. Now, if I CD to my music directory, you'll see I now have that songs.txt file there. All right. Is there any questions about that? Okay. Please ask me if you do. All right, now there is a way to copy a file changing the name of the file. It's a very similar um, pattern that we just followed here. You have CP, your file path, your target path, and then you just add a slash with a new name. And so here, following along with this, I wanted to change Kenny Chesney's, I wanna still put Kenny Chesney into the party directory, but I wanna change his name, full name to Kenneth. And so I would just add that after the fact. Um, and so giving people a chance to uh, try this again, going up to their personal directories, um, create a new directory called music, much like you did with that, uh, or sorry, called movies, much like you did with the music directory. And then copy the file containing your three favorite movies to this directory, but to give it a new name. So not just what we did with this command, but try to change it to uh, add a slash there and then add a new name. And I'll give you a couple minutes to do that.
Okay, um, how are people doing? Um, if there's people in the live room needing help, I can slow down, absolutely. If people want to plow forward, happy to do that as well. Um, how are people doing in that live room? Jerry, Liz? We're good here. Thanks, Dave. Okay, perfect. Thank you, Jerry. And so yeah, just to show people what that might look like, again, I am in my personal directory. So I go mkdir. I want to create something called movies now. You see that? We got a blue one called movies. I'm going to then move to that movies file by pressing CD movies. It's going to clear up. So we're, we're down there. Now I want to copy the file containing my three favorite directories. Uh, sorry, my three files. Sorry, I don't need to be in this movies directory yet. Um, to this new directory. And so ls, I have that movies file. I want to cp movies dot txt and i want to move this to the movies directory and i'm going to change the name to films dot txt and that should be good so here have the same if i move to the movies directory boom you can see that films dot txt is in there all right are there any questions about that clear as mud all right great so plowing forward, um, the CP command, um, you can copy something to the same directory with a new name. And so it's just uh, creating a new file and essentially renaming it with a second copy on um, that CP, is the file name and the new file name. And so in this one, I decided I wanna keep Kenny Chesney, he's country, but I do want to give him his proper name of Kenneth. And so that's why I would go copy Kenny Chesney country and just change it to Kenneth. Now, here is um, next exercise. So copy the file containing your three favorite books in its current directory. So you should it, that should be in your main directory with your books and give that file a new name. I'll give you a couple minutes to do this. All right, how are people doing in the live room? And that same question goes for our virtual learners as well. If you wanna give any feedback, but asking uh, Jerry, Liz, Jeff, how are things going in there? Should, uh, you need- um, Good here. Learners? Good here? Okay, perfect. So going along with this, in order to do this, I would copy CP books, TXC, that's the current one. And I want to rename it to myfavebooks.txt. And now you can see, I have those two files. All right, so it looks like we're making a bit of a mess now. Things have kind of gone off the rails, but trust me, I think we're going somewhere. I wanna be going somewhere. We're not going anywhere. What are we doing? All right, so continuously plowing forward. Now this next one, the move command. Um, one thing I do want to say here, and it speaks to the meme on the page, this isn't like moving a file just on your desktop because there isn't an undo button. And if you press, if you move a file and you don't know where it is, or you move it to a spot that you can't access, that that file is effectively gone or lost, or it could cost you a lot of time in trying to find it. So this is one of the commands that you do want to start being quite careful with just to avoid those problems. Now, 
the move command has the exact same syntax as the copy command. So again, if you want to move a file to another directory, keeping its name, it's that same instead of CP, it's MV, file path, file name, and the target path. Again, I decided Kenny Chesney is party. He's no longer country. Moving him out of that, and he's going to be in that party scene. Now, giving you one exercise, I think there's one more after this. So, uh, thank you so much for holding on till the end. Um, in your personal directory, create a new directory called books. And then after that, move one of the files because you have two files for your books. Move one of them containing your three favorite books to this current directory and give that file a new name. Again, I'll give you a couple minutes to hatch through this and please ask any questions that you might have. All right, checking in with people. How are people doing? Uh, Jeff Jerry lives. We're good. Thanks, Nick. No worries. Thank you. And so, yes, to do this, I'm going to do that mkdir command, create that new books directory. You can see it's there. I'll clear this to go back to the top. So you can see that's there. Now I'm going to move my books.txt file. I'm going to move it to this books directory. I'm going to name it mybooks.txt. Boom. So you can see two things. Now that books.txt is gone there. And then when I move to this books directory, you can see my books kicking around. All right. And so, yeah, you can see that the same syntax with copy as move. So I'm going to skim over this, how you can give it a new name. How now this, oh, sorry trying to get ahead of myself. It was just that one. If you want to rename a file without um, actually copying it, like we've done with the other ones, that's how the move command works. So it's just MV, the file name, and give a file a new name. So if I wanted to rename this movies.txt, I would just go MV movies.txt. I could do my movies.txt. And you can see now, Movies.txt has been replaced with mymovies.txt. All right, this is the last command we're learning. We're almost there. Um, the rm command to remove a file. Okay, this one in danger. This is the danger zone because when you move a file and you might move it to the wrong direction or to the wrong place and you might not be able to find it, the possibility of finding it is still there. With the remove command, th there's no takesy backsies. Th this is it. So be very careful when you are removing um, any type of files. Um, the syntax is the exact, um, sorry, it's not the exact thing as a copy. It's just that. It's, let's say if I wanted to remove a song file, I go rm songs.txt. It's gone, never to be seen again. Now, a couple of things about this, and I think I mentioned that in the this page, I have, can Jerry, can you see the, the OSF page that I'm pointing to? I never know if switching back and forth works. Yes, we can. Okay, yes. Yeah. So this page on Unix flags, you can see here, there's a number of different flags. They look like these kind of letters. Now, jumping back into my slides, but referencing those, Flags are something to change the behavior of a command to kind of give it a little bit of, depending on what you're doing, giving it some more flexibility or giving it additional functionalities. Um, this 
R flag is a, um, a valuable one because it, it stands for recursive and it allows you to operate on multiple files or whole directories. So if I wanted to get rid of my music directory and I press remove movies, it would say cannot remove movies. It's a directory. But if I go remove R movies, you can do it like that. And so you can see it is gone just like that. Um, the recursive file um, flag can be used for other things. You can copy multiple different text files. You can move things around in larger batches as well as moving around individual directories. Um, so yeah, you can see how it can go in different directions. This is just a couple of examples of what that looks like. Um, are there any questions at this point? Okay, now I understand that I am getting to the top of the hour, so I might leave people with this. People can stick around if they want, people can drop off, but I'm um, talking a little bit about putting this all together. And this is a little exercise. And so, um, yeah, in terms of the recording, Liz, I'll pause, <laughs> putting it all together. Let's see what this looks like. Um, we have made a mess. And I'm sorry that I caused you to make a mess, but if you look at your folders, there's files everywhere, there's duplicates. It, there really isn't any system, it's just madness. And that's how sometimes it can get, both on your local computer and when you're working on with larger scale data. And so what we can do now is to try to clean it up. And so I do have an exercise here. I'm going to uh, just full screen this so people can pay attention to what they're looking at. Um, I want effectively for people to create this folder hierarchy with their personal directory at the top. And you can see here, there's four different directories. The first three, you have my movies, my music, and my books. And all of these are the directories that contain files for your name and the movies.txt, your name and your music.txt, your name and books. Now, there's also this fourth directory called Nick's Picks. Now I have this file called Nick Rockland and I believe you should be able to access it. I believe I've changed uh, the access controls on it. If I haven't, please let me know and I can go and do that uh, shortly. Um, and I want you to copy those files into this newly created directory in your folder. Now, before I kind of let people go loose or if you wanna leave, um, remember that um, if you do move them, they won't be there for other people to access. So this would be a copy command. Um, and so with that said, please feel free to go off, or if this is something you have something to make at 11, you're just kind of sick of hearing me talk, which I totally get, um, please feel free to drop off. I thank you so much for attending this, and um, we're happy to stick around, answer questions, and uh, if um, this is it for you for today, that's great, but uh, we will be doing a session this afternoon on intro to Sockeye as well. So um, yeah, thanks so much, and yeah, feel free to play around with us, see what you can do, and uh, ask any questions of myself or the people in the room.